The average life expectancy of someone with schizophrenia or bipolar disorder is around 15 years shorter than that of the general population. And worse still, for schizophrenia, the gap is widening. Now, while the reasons for this are complex, many agree that it has to do with side effects of some of their medications, particularly the mood stabilizers and antipsychotics. But what if I told you there was another way to treat this mental illness where you didn't need to take medications? And that's what we're going to be looking at today, some new research showing just that. Oftentimes, people with conditions such as schizophrenia or bipolar believe that medication is their only option. They may take meds that help them with their symptoms, but they cause serious side effects. And many end up on an endless quest of trialing different combinations of meds, only to find that nothing really works. Now, as a psychiatrist, it is difficult for me to prescribe these medications, which I know can cause serious side effects. And while these side effects may be treatable, they may require yet more medications. Now, that's why I'm excited to tell you about new research looking into whether the ketogenic diet can help. Now, I'm sure many of you know someone doing keto or have at least seen it on social media. And you may be suspicious of any diet where you consume large amounts of fat. However, did you know that the ketogenic diet was invented around 100 years ago as an effective treatment for childhood epilepsy? And since then, the diet has been studied as a possible treatment for many neurological conditions. But what is a ketogenic diet? Simply put, Keto is a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet where the lack of carbohydrate forces the body to use fat as a fuel source. Chemicals called ketone bodies are produced in the body, and these are believed to cause reduced excitability of nerve cells, reduced inflammation, and improved function of the mitochondria, the powerhouse of our cells. Now, some recent research has suggested that psychiatric conditions may be caused by metabolic dysfunction in the brain. And besides this, we know that people diagnosed with psychiatric conditions have a far higher risk of conditions associated with poor metabolic health, things such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now, the reasons for this are varied and likely a combination of genetic and environmental factors. But what we do know for sure is that many psychiatric medications make people's metabolic health worse. And so wouldn't it make sense to try a treatment that reverses these metabolic problems? And now the study we're about to look at builds on numerous case studies which show that the ketogenic diet can be very beneficial for people with psychiatric conditions. The study by Dr. Sethi selected 23 people with either schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, and all had gained weight since starting psychiatric treatment and had at least one measure of metabolic abnormalities, things like high blood pressure or obesity. And at the start of the study, they had a medical and psychiatric evaluation before they even went on the diet. And after four months, they were then re-evaluated. And during the trial, participants had their level of ketone bodies in their blood measured to make sure they were actually complying with the diet. Now, ketones are the source of fuel that your body uses when you restrict carbohydrates. And so if someone doesn't have ketones in their blood, it means that they haven't successfully followed the ketogenic diet. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later on to show why that's important. And so let's talk about the results. So what happened? Of the 23 people who started this trial, 21 completed it. And we'll start with some of the negative things that they noticed. Well, there were some side effects to this diet. In fact, people reported things like headaches, fatigue, and constipation. But they had largely resolved by the third week. And now let's look at some of the positives that they found, starting with the physical health. And so if we look at table one, you can see that overall the participants lost weight. But better still, the weight loss targeted visceral fat loss. And now visceral fat is where the fat accumulates around the internal organs. And this is associated with things like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Patients also finished the trial with lower blood pressure and a lower heart rate. In fact, at the beginning of the study, 29% of participants met the criteria for metabolic syndrome. This is a constellation of metabolic problems like diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. But at the end of the trial, none of them had that condition. But this is where the study gets interesting because it's often thought that the keto diet is honestly, well, it's, it's too difficult for anyone to stick to. So let's see how people did in the study. They actually found that some people struggled with this. Now, of the 21 people who completed the trial, 14 stuck to the diet, 6 were semi-adherent meaning that they only stuck to the diet 50 to 80% of the days that they were in the study. And there was one person who was not adherent. And so the question is, well, did those who were semi-adherent to the diet get any benefit from keto 
or are they just wasting their time? Well, if we look at the graph that separates the results from those in the adherent group to those deemed semi-adherent, we can evaluate this. So now I'm just going to orient you to this. So as you can see, the adherent group are represented by the bars in red, and the semi-adherent group are represented by the gray bars. Now what we can see is that the biggest benefits were seen by those who were able to comply with the diet. But importantly, improvements were also seen in those who found it more difficult to stick to the diet. Simply put, you didn't need to stick to the diet 100% of the time to see improvements in their health, which is a reassuring result for anyone who's considering keto. And honestly, from my personal experience doing diets and personal experience recommending diets like paleo and keto to my patients, I don't think I've ever met anyone who was able to stick to it 100% of the time. But it doesn't mean it's all for naught. As long as you're doing it as best you can, you can expect to get some benefits from this. And that's a really reassuring finding. Let's look at some of the other things they found. So the blood test showed that they had reduced inflammation, lower blood lipid levels, reduced blood glucose, and improved insulin resistance. The results regarding cholesterol levels are a little bit more difficult to interpret. But overall, when we looked at all of the patients in the study, their overall risk of having a heart attack or a stroke in the next 10 years did not change. That's a really reassuring finding because I know a lot of people think, you know, if I eat a high-fat diet my arteries are just going to slam shut from fat and cholesterol. That's not what they found. But in fact, when they did a subgroup analysis, when they looked at the adherent group, they found that there was an 11% decrease in this risk. Now, while it's really reassuring to see how this diet was associated with all these physical improvements, let's not forget why we're here. We're here to talk about the effects of this diet on mental health. And that's where this study gets even more interesting. Okay, so this table summarizes the effects on the mental health of the patients who are on this diet. Now, it is really encouraging to see these findings because firstly, we can see large drops in the scores for depression, anxiety, and the severity of mental illness. On top of this, participants experienced improved sleep quality and a measurable improvement in their quality of life. And once again, there's a really important finding here, and that is that the semi-adherent group also had improvements in their mental health. Now, these findings are truly groundbreaking. And just to contextualize this, if there was a drug out there that was able to produce results like this, it would be a blockbuster and a total winner. Having looked at numerous studies of antidepressants and antipsychotics during my time in the pharmaceutical industry and at the FDA, sometimes we would get a 10% improvement. And I'm not even talking about recovery from the condition like a 10% improvement in symptoms, and that would be enough to get the drug on the market. Now, I want to come back to this study, because at the start of the study, only 30% of the patients were deemed in recovery from their mental illness as a result of their standard treatment of mood stabilizers or antipsychotics. However, at the end of this study, 75% of them were in recovery. And if we were to look at the subset of people who completely adhered to this diet, all of them were in recovery. That is mind-blowing, especially in the context of serious mental illnesses like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, which a lot of people write off as being incurable. But do you want to know what really impressed me about this study? Well, is actually some of the comments that the participants themselves had to say about the diet. So let's see what some of them said. One participant said, well, since being on this diet, I haven't noticed any significant anxiety. Another said, it can honestly save a lot of lives. It saved mine. I would not be here today if it was not for keto. It has helped a lot with my mood stabilization. Or this, if things continue in a positive trajectory, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility that my bipolar disorder could go into remission. Or this, my opportunity to participate in the metabolic psychiatry study has transformed my life. I gained knowledge, became able-bodied again, and my mood disorder and eating disorder symptoms lessened dramatically. I became sexually active again after 16 years of celibacy. Or how about this comment? I can tell you that I've never felt better than I have since using ketosis. It's worked far better than Lamotrigine ever did. Now, what I really like about these quotes is the actual words from the patients, outlining how the diet made them feel and the impact that this had on their lives. Because in my career, I've seen lots of research stating how a treatment improves a patient's score on a standardized questionnaire, but none of them are quite as powerful as actually hearing the testimonies from the patients. And so it's really encouraging to read about these people regaining control over their lives and their illnesses using the ketogenic diet. Okay, so now let's talk about what type of impact I think this research is going to have on the psychiatric community? Well, for starters, I think it's going to make a lot of doctors look at diet differently. Now, I think this is really key because the way I was trained as a psychiatrist 
was to mostly focus on medication. Now, I don't think I ever had one lecture on metabolic therapies during my training. And I think when you go through a training program like that, that never emphasizes diet and you're just talking about medications all the time, you start to think that diet doesn't make an impact at all. And you kind of put it in this little box to the side and just say, well, if it was really that effective, I would have learned about it. And so I'm just going to focus on the meds. And I think that's how a lot of psychiatrists really look at diet. But you can't really do that anymore because what this research shows is that if you use a ketogenic diet, not only can you get substantial improvements in your mental health, much larger than you can get with mood stabilizers or antipsychotics, but you also get all of these side benefits, right? Instead of having a drug that's going to worsen your metabolic health, you know, cause things like diabetes, high blood pressure, and weight gain, you actually have something that's going to lower your heart rate, your blood pressure, help you lose weight, and overall lower your risk of these adverse cardiovascular outcomes in the long term. And that is huge. And so I'm hoping that this research opens the eyes of a lot of doctors out there and just shows them, hey, we've got more tools in our tool belt. There are more things we can use to help people. Now, an even cooler thing about this study is that it has actually spurred on numerous other randomized controlled trials looking at the ketogenic diet for different mental health conditions. And so I think over the next one to two years, we're going to see this area of research simply explode. And I really hope it has a transformative effect on how patients and psychiatrists view treatment options for serious problems like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at this new piece of research and you share my optimism that diet can be really transformative in psychiatry. The current medications we have to treat severe mental illness, they can have terrible side effects. And so it's great to see a new approach that could lead to a more holistic and integrated way to treat mental health. Now, if you want to learn more about this, you might be interested in checking out my interview that I did with Georgia Ede earlier on this year. Check it out.